Okay, hello and welcome to this, my final studio armor review for my Imperial Guard. And today we're covering the two flyers I currently have. Uh, I am working on a Avenger Strike Fighter, uh, but it's a long way from being done. Uh, I'm, taking some, I'm taking real care with these uh, Forge World models. Uh, and I do have some special paint schemes and I have to get some certain decals for them. But I want to talk through my approach with the, uh, the fighters. Now, these are dust models. These are not typical Games Workshop type uh, models. The reason for that is I really do like the stats for the Imperial Guard, or sorry, Imperial Navy Thunderbolt and their Strike Fighter and their their Lightning. Uh, matter of fact, I really like the the Lightning as a a fighter. But unfortunately, they Forge World has changed the model design. Back when the original Imperial Aeronautics, uh, Aeronautica came out and they developed the model of the Lightning and Lightning Strike Fighter, they came out with a what I think is a beautiful aircraft. Uh, it really looks like the air superiority uh, fighter. It's not as stocky, it's a little more aerodynamic looking. Um, sleeker design, I, I really like it. The Thunderbolt and the uh, uh, Avenger Strike Fighter are much clunkier and don't have the streamlined look which is fine. I mean, I love those two airplanes as well, but again, their their role lends themselves really well to that look cuz you got a strike fighter which is I mean, the A10 Warhog is the real life version of the Avenger strike fighter. It's a a brute and it's not very graceful looking, but it looks good for what it does. The P47 Thunderbolt was a big hulking jug of an aircraft, uh, not the most aesthetically pleasing. I know some would argue that, but uh, it wasn't sleek and high performance from perspective of, you know, like a race car looking thing. But it did its job well. Very nice heavy fighter, which is what the Thunderbolt in Forge World is. But the Lightning is a faster, uh, more like the P-51 or the FW-190 or the M, uh, sorry, the uh, F-16. Those are the kind of jets that reminds you of now. So I wanted it, but they didn't, they stopped selling it. They actually changed the mold and now it's clunkier. It doesn't look as good as the original. So I went with these dust models instead. And the model on the right is the is my representation of the regular Avenger. I'm sorry, not the Avenger, the Lightning. And the one on the left is the Lightning Strike, which is a bomber type version. So there really is no conversion at all here to speak of, except potentially the, the elimination of some of the guns. So on this version I did have to get rid of the outboard gun on either side because it only has two LAS cannons along with in the uh, normal one is the, lo the large long barreled auto cannon <clears throat> and then I had to make the lightning strike fighter actually carry bombs and so very very simple way to do this I have to remove this but the actual kit comes with a nice bomb rack, six bombs, and sure enough, the uh, one of the upgrades you can get for Lightning Strike Fighter or either Lightning actually is a bomb rack with six bombs. But you could also get an upgrade to make it a bomber, which comes with two bomb, two tactical bombs, and the what do they call it, the uh, strafing run rule. So magnetizing those, and instead of using a magnet on the bomb, I just use a nail head and it sticks on there really nicely. So now I've got the bomber. Okay. Alright, there we go. Alright, now the painting, paint job is, uh, I, again, looking back at my military history, uh, the Royal Air Force created several squadrons that were piloted by, or crewed by, uh, the various nationalities that were uh, conquered by Germany. So there are several Polish squadrons. And so I went ahead and I decided to make my version of those. So I'm using the RAF color scheme. So there's a, a light gray in, underneath and then a uh, sea gray and dark, uh, dark brown, or sorry, dark green on top. Uh, both uh, color schemes here, both airplanes carry the same color scheme. The Avenger Strike Fighter will do the same. But I did use decals from uh, I forget the name of the company uh, that actually produces them. I'll, I'll have a link in the description when I put this one, this video out. But these decals are 
the decals for the PZL 11. Uh, yeah, these are for the 11. So these are actually Polish Air Force uh, decals from 1939 period, 1939, 1920, uh, 38, or what have you. And so it is. The in, the in the checkerboard, that is the Polish air insignia, and these are actual Polish squadron markings from the, the period. And the I've tried to make each of these. Uh, obviously, there are two different types of fighters. And they are actually two different uh, squadrons. The two strike fighters will be part of the same squadron because the two strike fighters are going to be identical. Uh, since this one had room for it, I did put a little bit of nose art on there just to make it a little more human. Uh, Seems they you know, humans like to do that, right? So couldn't pass that up. Decided to put that out there. Very simple, uh, just a paint job. Uh, just making sure you can kind of work through the way the model is built. Take a look at what it comes with. How does that line up with the stats of the actual uh, unit you're trying to mimic? And these cases came out really well. With some swappable components, a little bit of modifications. And I was able to come up with the, the strike fighter as well. Uh, one thing I will showcase here real quick is the base itself um, because the dust fighter comes with a very, very short base. Uh, sorry, flying stand. Okay, and so I had to put that up on a block of wood and then mask it with all the scenery there. That's various types of scenery from these are actual pieces of bark from some trees I've got in my backyard. A lot of uh, rock, <laughs> rock out of my gravel driveway, and uh, these are different types of trees you can get. Uh, these are almost like a bottle brush type of tree, very old ones I've got that I just added more flock to. Here's some uh, tree armatures with uh, the old good old lichen, again flocked out a little bit more. And that hides that block of wood really, really well so I can elevate the actual fighter up to the height of a standard J, yeah, sorry, GW um, flying stand. So there you go. That is my my two lightnings, Imperial Armor lightnings, or sorry, Imperial Air Force lightnings. And uh, I hope you enjoyed kind of the different this different approach to equipping your own army, Imperial Guard Army. Obviously, you can use some of these same techniques with uh, almost any army. If, if there's a model out there you like that kind of matches the stats of one of the units you want to build give it a shot as long as your local games uh, group you know doesn't mind conversions or uh, using models that aren't GW uh, you can have a lot of fun and my game group is really good about that so there are my two dust fighters that stand in as my Imperial Lightnings so I hope you enjoyed this let me know if uh, what you think down below share like and subscribe I'll see you in my next video thanks bye bye